Joffrey Renly Rob Stark are all thieves. They'll bend the knee or I'll destroy them. Mina had been waiting some thirty minutes, running her fingers along the dusty council table, holding her pregnant stomach gingerly, at the dark, dank stone council chamber of the Wolf's Den, or the Old Keep as the small folk called it. Her husband, King Engar, was away warring once more, as was his wont. He had eschewed the use of the small council chamber for some years now, taking counsel in his chambers, or if it were a matter of great import, where he could display his justice, he would do so in open court in the throne room. Mina admired his industrialness, as she looked out the window and into the city that her brother-in-law, the late King Lister, first of his name, had begun remaking. She could see that the city arena was nearly complete, the seven-pointed star on its roof cresting the city. She could see cobblers everywhere working on Lister's streets and roads, as well as Damon's tower rising over the ocean like an immense iceberg of shining white stone. Maester Damon had arrived with his huge chain weighing, his half-brother Hilario in toll, soon followed by the Septon of Snow. It's becoming quite the sight, your grace, said Septon Vortimer, donning his hair shirt as he always did. Mina replied, still lost in the city lights. Yes, it is. Lister would be proud, Mina, said the Lyseni bastard. Enger Seymour had arrived with his two brothers and nephew, Lord Commander Norbert and Arlen, Master of Whisperers. John Seymour waited at the door. That would be your grace to you, bastard, declared John Seymour some distance away. His voice echoed across the chamber. Hilario wasn't much light on the council, but it could not be disputed that he had been a most able master of coin. Hilario snapped back in his waspish tone. Why does the little dog bark? And he's so far away. Enger, do teach your nephew some humility. Humility? You would presume to name the queen by her first name and me without my lordly title? Hold your tongue, bastard. If another disrespecting word passes your lips, I will have them sewn shut. Mina began to panic as the four Seymour surrounded the Valyrian as he recoiled away from them. Not a man for direct confrontation. For lack of a better word, he is a coward. The council chambers had grown as belligerent as the streets of Sevensport since the departure of King Enger, Danes High Oak and Benfrey Lancer to war. The tensions were cut just as quickly as they had arose when the hand of the king arrived without saying a word, putting them in their place with a look. A thousand apologies, your grace. We had been waiting for you in the king's tower. Mina waved away his apologies. She liked to look across the city, though she was insulted in the time she had to wait as their queen. She was just glad that Lionel had arrived to call the tensions. She pointed out of the window. What do you see in here, my lords? Mina queried, to which Lionel replied, Er, uh, pardon your grace? I do not try to trick you, my lord hand. What do you see? Mina sat down in the chair Sir Norbert had pulled for her. Towers, streets, your grace, said Hilario. He made sure to stare at the young Seymour who remained at the door as he unicated the word grace. I see the city, Hilario finished, rubbing his hands through his pointed beard, his eyes never leaving Sir John. Yes, yes you do. I do not see light, however. My husband has been busy dispensing justice. I feel it falls to me to dispense light. Don't you think it's time we had some revelry again, like in the days of Lister or Lyanna? To this, Lionel answered abruptly. Your Grace, we have more pressing matters. We have reports from beyond the wall. His Grace Enger... He was cut off by Mina before he could finish. Is my husband well? Are we winning? Y yes, Your Grace. Lionel sounded almost offended. Of course he is. Enger promised me he'd return. He's not one to break promises. Mina turned to the Master of Whispers now. My Lord, Lord Arlen, tell me the temper of the city. Tell these oblivious lords what is happening out there, and even in here. Mina said, her eyes piercing at Illyrio and Sir John, who took to hiding behind the door. Arlen stepped forward from the hearth that blazed, but such was the size of the room, it was still rather dim. I assume your grace refers to the issues in Andleton. Three break-ins just this week. That's where the manses are. The rat pits are worse. Twenty murders this week, all believed to be done by one man, said Arlen Seymour. We must put an end to this madman for the safety of our people, Enger Seymour said. He was ever empathising with the small folk. Our key shareholders to the bank reside there, Hilario interjected somewhat urgently. And who can blame these small folk that break in? 
Yes, we have plenty of work in construction, but they are being made to sit on their hands, pay up coin for wars not of their making. My lords, we are poking a sleeping bear. Let's give it some honey, Mina stated. Uncle, she said curtly but with affection to Hilario. Two things, drop those ridiculous taxes at once. You are no longer a usurer. And how long till that bloody thing is finished, Mina said. She was referring to the warrior's gardens, of course, the huge arena Lister had commissioned. This coming moon, your grace, and I had instructions from my nephew to keep the tax. Sir Norbert, perhaps slightly belligerently, put his hand on his sword and said, The king, not your nephew, and the queen has given you a command. Carry it out, Valerian. Hilario responded, Ah, so the big dog can bark. I take my orders from my nephew, the king, alone. This is the king's council, is it not? We're speaking of matters of state. What would an upjumped hedge knight know of such things? Lionel snarled at the Valyrian. The king is away. I speak with his voice. The queen had the right of this. The taxes, drop them now. We're asking for truculence at a certain point. And what of the arena, your grace? Mina moved back to the window and said, A rose heart like the ones of old. Let these people know who they have to thank for this splendour. That's what Lister used to say. I fear we're betraying his memory, my lords. Let us have some merriment. She said like a young girl almost. The lords gave her a nod and left all bar Maester Damon. Gods know we need it, Damon said, placing a caring hand upon her shoulder, smiling his old smile. Mina looked up. The shadows in the room made even her radiance fade. She looked some ten years older. He chastises his lords with armies and forgets where these armies come from. He rips out these lords at great cost. Not gold. Gold is never my concern. They are boiling over, uncle. He's become so concerned with the weeds in their castle. When he rips them out, he angers the viper outside our very gates. She said, turning away to look out the window again. Hello everyone and welcome back to Andalia with me, Grand Maester Stitch, and Enger, the third of his name, the Tenacious. Only 24, wow, it seemed, I thought he was older than that, but um, anyway, yes, in the last episode we took down a few more rebellious factions, it looks like the West are at war again, which is interesting, um, but we just need to continue to try and bring Andalia back together. It's so broken at the minute, we don't have a huge amount of troops at all, which is also worrying. We're currently helping out with this other wilding invasion which they just keep happening at the minute which is rather annoying let's sail the fleets up to help out with that i did sort out a huge huge amount of guardian ships and betrothals off screen um some of that stuff needed sorting as the ai has just been all over the shop lately so we've done a lot of that between a hell of a lot of all the houses bringing them together hopefully making the next generation of Andalia a little bit more interesting. Let's unpause and let things go on. And we've had some more shareholders. We keep getting a hell of a lot of shareholders at the moment. Um, someone from up here, which is interesting. That The city of Estige Barons, which has got the Morgaf sigil, which is interesting. Uh, the Bank of Crown has acquired a new powerful shareholder, Lord Harston Seven Star. Well, that's a good one, to be fair. Um, someone from the City of Champions. Okay and lady bolton okay so everyone's becoming a shareholder in the bank it would seem <clears throat> um lord riswell as well is there anything we can do more with that to try and hopefully it'll bring us in a lot more money um someone else from dire den down south so that's awesome to know uh you wisdom and mercy are legendary i lord enger the planter accepts your proposal for a non-aggression pact yeah so we have have sent out a few of those as well the bank of the crown is quite a new powerful shareholder lady teller of long table okay Okay, we're getting too many of these now that they're starting to get annoying. That was our father as well on the last one. Um, yeah, what can we do intrigue-wise? Even though feasts and such are not Enger's doing, I do believe that maybe some of his council and his friends and especially his wife, the Queen, may advise some of it. So Sire Hilario has become a shareholder. Okay, so he's finally got something. So it may be a good idea to hold a feast once um, our troops are back. Let's just finish this wildling threat first and I think we probably are going to have to host a tawny and a feast hosted by the queen maybe we need to try and get people back on side a little bit because everybody literally despises anger um he's not a bad guy he's just ruthless he's yeah i i like him i like him myself lord blackglass i'm enjoying 
him. He's a very different to the kings that we've had before, which is good. It's nice to have a different style of king. And it looks like we're not even probably going to be needed for this war, and the Crescents are also involved. Uh, but we will help out. Literally everybody in Andalia is becoming a shareholder, it would seem, in the Bank of Sevensport. <clears throat> right, let's land our troops. Your Grace, High King Inga the Third, the Stormlands is under attack from the Westerlands, is in need of aid. We implore you to join our coalition against our common enemy. Uh, I'm not going to get involved with that, I'm afraid. We don't have the manpower for it or the wealth, and I don't really want to piss off the West, because if they take the Stormlands, there's a good chance they may come for us next, which is worrying, so I don't want to I don't want to weaken ourselves. Who are you? Some random and or Northmen in charge of one of the cities. Right, we've got all well, our ships here. Let's merge together. Let's land them at Eastwatch by the Sea. The Bank of the Crown has acquired a powerful new shareholder, Master Royce. Of Travelton, okay. Again, a bit annoying. I may have to cancel those in a minute so that we don't have to hear about them anymore. Uh, don't me inform me of any new shareholders because it's starting to get a little bit annoying. Uh, who have we got who is idle at the moment? Um, ah, our Septon. Um, can you please perform charity in Sevensport? Uh, your Grace, I believe Arwen Templeton has been in your custody for too long. I hereby offer to pay his ransom. 46 gold. Arwen Templeton. Who's a liberator, apparently, which is really interesting for a 14-year-old. Uh, no, she's going to stay in my custody, I'm afraid. We need to make sure that we keep you in line. We've got two Corbrys, haven't we? No, just one Corbry now. And Elaine Oxter, who is the wife. Can we ransom you? I'm willing to let you go. And who else do we have here? A Viper and Gale. I don't think we can ransom you. So we'll just keep you in our custody for now. 15 years old. We could always marry you off to somebody. Of course, we've got Benfrey, who will be staying in our custody, of course. He's picked up the brooding train now, which is interesting. Have our troops landed now? Yes, 7,000 strong under the command of Enger, who's Eldred of Stone Keep, And we'll go for John Hornbreaker. Um, I believe that Elaine... Okay, he's offering more gold than what we were originally going to get. So yeah, I accept your offer. That's perfectly fine. Best on you and your house. I refuse to pay. That's because it's already been paid, Lord Sunderland. Right, let's assault this. Let's get Eastwatch by the Sea back under control. Um, is that the host that we're fighting against, or is it this? What's this one over here, isn't it? Let's let's just march on and destroy that host. Fate smiles upon me. My wife Mina is pregnant. Awesome, Queen Mina is pregnant yet again. Perfect. Let's keep pumping out them seven stars. We are a little bit short with the main branch. Of course, we've got loads of distant cousins now. The seven star branch of um, Owen's hold is actually pretty big now. Let's have a look at the family tree because I'm sure a couple of people did ask to see it in the last episode sorry if people don't want to see it but we'll, we'll have a little look right so we're only going to look at the male lines just so we can see sort of where we have people alive still so Owen's line I believe died out didn't he, he had a son yeah had a daughter died all daughters who had corpories and rose hearts interesting silver eyes and brunes racks and red guards yes so owen's line completely died out um ambrose's line okay went through anger the second his only son he had of course kyra and liana's line which is where we get to anger and then his two son fiona and florian so where we want to go now is down lionel's line which is where we get to ambrose isn't it yeah so they literally do blend back together i think ambrose had a brother though didn't he benjakot that's it and that's where we've got the other seven stars sir enger seven star our cousin and sir roman seven stars so these are the seven stars of Owen's hold on wow between them they've had seven children all daughters wow that's insane so there is only our two sons as young male seven stars so maybe another son wouldn't be too bad to be honest we could probably do with another son i was going to say i'd like to have a daughter just so we've got a daughter but i think i'd rather have a third son actually looking at it we could do with some male seven stars around uh someone has inherited the city of sevensport master M mendelton oh okay is it his son no is that mendelton's dead finally they i can't believe they've been around as long as they actually have i just need to march up to this army quickly get this war with the wildlings over we should crush that host one of my garnets my young ward benfrey slowly mastering the art of swordmanship benfrey snow becomes a poor fighter okay probably send him off to the night's watch or the citadel 
or maybe even the Sept of Snow at some point. Your grace, my mission to Old Stones has so far been a success. During my visit to the court of Lady Amira of Mud of Seaguard, I have seemed to manage to make her understand what a benevolent and peaceful ruler you really are. Well, thank you indeed. Is he going to march on to us now? Yes, he is. Hopefully we can trap that wildling host. We need to attack the leaders there as well. So if we could capture or kill the leader. The vassals of Andalia now find you intimidating. Good, as they should. Uh, I do not understand fear, but once you have felt your leg shake and teeth chatter with fear, then it is hard to remain brave. This does not make me a coward, does it? How do we lose it? Well, we just randomly lose such a good trait. It just keeps happening to Engar, which is really frustrating. He doesn't deserve to lose the brave trait. I've got no idea why he just has. If we can capture this person and just end this war, that would be great, please. Uh, I've, a previously obscure noble has distinguished himself during the Battle of Castle Black. Perhaps I can make use of him. Sir Theon of Arrowgrass Road. Okay, well, we'll get him a better name. Come on, guys. Think of a name for this guy. Is he already in our court? He is. Let's arrange marriage for him, then. Maybe we should marry him to the Lady Viprin that we have in our court. Let's have a look. Arrange marriage between him and... We had Lady... Where's where's that Vipering girl? Can we not... How old is he? We have got a Harlaw. She looks a bit grim. Ah, this Botley girl. Keller Snow. Let's marry him to her. And I want to change his name in Sigil. Sir Fion. So, um, yeah, guy. Arrow Grass Road. Maybe we could do something with an arrow for him. Let's make him an important so we can keep an eye on him. And that's just reminded me that I did actually add custom characters for the first time in a long time for this episode. And I haven't gone over the two of them. So I do really apologize for that so let's see if we can find them i believe this is one of them alice it wasn't meant to be her name i do apologize that i couldn't get a better name for her and i can't give her a house name because she is female and i can't go into the game files to do that because obviously the file is too big now it's been way too big for too long uh, but once she has a child with her husband i will make that that house um charismatic negotiator attractive quick socializer charitable kind and deceitful very much like Marjorie. I get Marjorie vibes from this girl. And then our other custom character for this episode. I'm pretty sure there was two. If I can find him, here he is. Lynn Clifford. Three white candles on purple, which looks very nice. Um, he is an incredit web weaver. He's a trained fighter, a poet. He is attractive, homosexual, a master seducer, charitable, gregarious, and deceitful. I think I've made him important already. Yes, I have. Um, I can't marry him at the moment because he's in hiding for some unknown reason hopefully he comes out of hiding soon so yeah right right we've destroyed that host there can we lift the siege here in the shadow tower and hopefully end this war pretty quickly so that we can return home and try and heal the realm the realm needs healing desperately it's a huge glover host that's marching towards us let's assault the shadow tower get that back under our control I want this war over with as quickly as possible so that we can bring these troops home. There we go, the Shadow Tower is back under our control. Let's march back to Eastwatch by the Sea and try and lift that there. Which area are we actually at war with? Is it the other lands? Uh, Widowmaker. Oh. Yeah, of the other lands, right? Okay, yeah. And we've got 6686. Six, I thought that said 6666 six, six, six then, but um, yeah. And we're making money while we're uh, at war as well, which is good. Every time my acquaintance Helene meets a stranger, she looks like she might faint. She's a bit shy. Um, get rid of shy. No, if she wants to be shy, she can be shy. That's fine. Makes her easier to keep under our control, hopefully. Uh, my wife Mina asked me to buy her some new clothes because of the pregnancy. She has outgrown most of her wardrobe and now she feels frustrated for not having anything nice to wear whenever she needs to make an appearance. My dear, you do not need new clothes. You are already wonderful. We can flatter her, save gold, and actually improve her opinion of us. So, yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> That's a no-brainer. Well played, Enger. Well played. Um... The 1,000 men, where are they marching off to now? Are they marching off to First Forest? Getting a lot of lag again, I have noticed. We'll march into fast for First Forest. We may as well go and get it under control. Maybe smash the remaining host. A daughter was born to Lucius the Laughing Falcon and Ariane Rack, named Joclyn Marister. Malister? Marister. So that's an interesting one to be born. Can we assault this? It should be insanely easy to get these lands under siege. And one thing we'll better do now is bring off fleet up there as well just to so we can get our men to safety and away from beyond the wall as quickly as possible let's assault again and then we'll march on and destroy this wildling host hopefully let's go and get that under underway and hopefully that'll win this war and we can return home then 
hopefully keep the wildlings in line for a little bit. We did promise as Enger that we would help out the Night's Watch. We've sent them a hell of a lot of decent men, at least, haven't we, over the last few years. And a son was born to High King Enger the Tenacious and Queen Mina of Andalia named Leobold. Leobold Seven Star. It's a new name. Um, we've got a Florian. We've got a Theon. I don't want to go with too many new names. Let's name him for our brother. Let's go with Lister. Lister Seven Star. We've had two different ones. Let's get some of those old Seven Star names. Uh, my young subject has finally finished her education in the intrigues of court. She seems to have learned all the basic skills required. A flamboyant schema. Is she in house arrest? She should be in house arrest. We can recruit her. How good is she? Not too bad, I suppose. I think she is in house arrest anyway, isn't she? But yeah, we'll keep her in a house arrest for now. We can probably marry her to somebody at some point. Hopefully we can capture the leader here and end this. Would be useful. And there we go. A great victory. What is it? 69%. Nice. And there we go. 71%. Should we just go and take Aunt Lavelle? Or oh, hard home. Uh, your grace needs some sunspit. I do not care. Why would I care what the hell is happening down in Dawn? It's a flipping world away. Let's get Anne Lavelle under control quickly. We are losing manpower though. Uh, my sister, Princess Alice, has not been herself lately. I've noticed how she's lost weight and been overcome by episodes of intense fatigue. Apparently the underlying cause is a cancerous growth which is sucking the life out of her. Oh, my god, what? what is with cancer at the moment? And she's got sympathy for the drowned gods apparently. She's married to Pyre and Seymour. She has gave him... A son and heir, at least, in Enger Seymour, I believe, is the future heir of Under. Wow, ten learning at eight. That's very impressive. Um, can we assign a guardian to him? Have we, He could be become very good if we get Damon in charge. No, not willing to go for it. He could be, be become very impressive if we can get him under the um, wardship of Damon. That would be really good. And Betrothed can marry Colmore Seymour and Miranda Morgoth. Yes, perfect. As I said, there's a lot of those marriages that are probably going to... Wow, Aunt Laveo has a lot of defenders. Your wisdom and mercy are legendary. I accept your suggestion that Colmore and Miranda get married. Perfect. Miranda Morgoth has arrived at your court. Colmore Seymour has arrived at your court. Miranda Morgoth, yeah, okay. Can we assault this? We may... There we go, perfect. 79%. I can't believe how many defenders that's actually got. Let's march down to hard home and end this. Once that's under siege, that's going to be the war done, isn't it? And we can return home and try and get things back in order. Your Grace, I've collected an ample tax revenue from Seven Support. The money should reach you together with this letter. Sir Hilario Snow. Excellent news. Wow, 100 gold. Okay, so we've, we're finally starting to get ourselves out of debt. We just need to end this war. We can get this war ended. Have some time of peace and prosperity, hopefully. Finally. It's been a long time coming. Is there any dangerous factions still? There's many factions, but no overly dangerous ones. Crown Loyalist, Danies High Oak, thank you very much. Uh, Quentin for the Rivers and Hills. Who the hell is Quentin? Oh, I'm mud. Okay. Um, heir to the Hedge Knights, Benfrey for Andalia. We've got a few backers there. No one massively scary. Lord Samwell for Mountain and Vale. Okay, so the Corbrys are plotting yet again. Married to a Harlaw, which is interesting. Very decent, our Harlaw. Our daughter was born to Sir Eddard Steelheart and Alyssa Turnbridge Keep, named Mora. Or a steel heart. Never a moment's peace, thought Lionel Redguard as he sat looking over papers at his desk. First the Vale and Iron Islands had risen in rebellion and set the realm on fire. Then the foolish Lord Viperin and Sunderland rose and were crushed. Now the wildlings attacked the wall and Andalia rushed to face them. These wars had all been successful for Andalia, but at what cost? Many lords hated Enger as a usurper, who still held his nephew under arrest. The constant wars had taken its toll on the lands and men as well. Between many lords disliking the king and the casualties of previous wars, the estimated full force of Andalia had become depleted. If war struck Andalia once again, many lords may openly rebel or just decline to send support. This worried Lionel, as there had been reports that the Kingdom of the Westerlands had taken even more land in the south, and travellers whispered of dragons flying around Castley Rock. Andalia was a kingdom of glass, and would need to be reinforced in order to survive. Lionel feared any more chaos might shatter the kingdom. Lord still plotted to free the son of Lister, hoping for him to rule, but a boy king would not solve Andalia's problems. Lionel sometime had his doubts that he had made the right decision 
Although Enger was his friend, he was a hard man to follow as of late. But he was a strong king who would be able to fix Andalia's issues, or at least that's what Lionel kept telling himself. Fear was what kept the lords in line though. It would only work for so long, especially with Andalia's diminished army. Already the council spoke of ways to mend the ties that were broken in the rebellions. Queen Mina had been active in the planning of the upcoming tourney which was meant to help mend the realm. The Bank of Andalia that Lister had founded had grown of late and had tied the funds of many lords to Sevensport. Once the armies returned home from the wall, they might have a moment's peace, but with the unrest and plotting in the kingdom, Lionel doubted it. Enger was strong and had many victories to his name already, but war and fear didn't make a king, and he may find himself in a war he cannot win. Hopefully the loyal men of Andalia could prevent such a war, but the situation in Andalia seemed dire. Uh, while carrying out my duties of the Bank of the Crown, I have met Keyholder Rogar on several occasions. These encounters have never ended well. One would be hard pressed to find a more unsympathetic character. I suspect he is spreading lies behind my back to damage my reputation. I will confront him, we become a bit of rivals, or I must be patient. No, I'll confront him. Uh, whilst the Bank of the Crown is growing in wealth and stature, the bank remains vulnerable to incursions against the city. The High Council have agreed uh, that fortifications for bank need to be built in Sevensport and have asked, to, that, asked that you oversee this project. Yes, of course. We want to be bringing in as much wealth as we can and we should prepare as winter is coming. Well, that is not good considering our army is so far north, so we need to get it home quickly. Let's get hard home, assaulted and under siege. Jorin Glover is no longer a participant in the High Chief Torrid's invasion of the north as King Eden of the north has joined of seven stop right, so we need to replace him. You're not even a Stark. Who the hell are you? We need to sort that out. We need to sort that out and get the Starks in place. I don't think you guys are going to mind if I do some tweaking to do that. that. I just don't understand because there are there are male Starks alive. I'm pretty sure that there are. We've, we've got Starks ourselves, haven't we? Where are they? Children. Here we go. Wendell Stark, who does have a son. Lucius. Oh, the Laughing Fout. Oh, wow. Is that is he literally the last? Oh, no, he does have a Stark daughter who's had a Steelheart child. Janna Stark. Okay. Yeah, the Starks have... The Starks are dead. The Starks have died out. How Stark is no more. That's crazy. I, I literally think the Starks have died out. I'll have another look in a second. At the family tree. That, that is huge that the Starks have died out. There we go, 91%. Let's attempt another assault. And yet again, let's bring the ships to hard home. That place is at 100%. We've won the war for the Night's Watch. Let's now take our men home and disband our troops as soon as possible. Let's sail them back to Greyhold. Maybe the Greystarks should become Lords of the North. Let's let's have a look at your family tree. Are there not literally no Starks at all? I do I think the Starks are no more. Corbris. Um yeah, she died, she died. The, the Starks are dead. Rosby any stalks down these lines at all no oh we've got no she died no oh we have sir brandon stark commander of the north sworn ship so there is one start left it would seem your grace i write to express my concentration at the fact that byam enjoys command of your armies when someone more appropriate like myself let's have a look at byam let's just cross off the starks for a moment okay byam's decent what do you like anger you are higher born. I'm sorry, Anger, but... My god, you're one of the only people that like us, though, so we need to keep you on side. So we're going to have to say yes, unfortunately. I know we don't like suck-ups, but we've got to keep some people on side. We don't have many friends. Um, yeah, return home. The High Chief Torrid invasion has ended, finally. Thank god for that. Right, disband unit. Command is no longer affecting us, so we can try and get things under control. Right, where were we? I was looking at the Stark family tree. Let's have a look. Where were we? Where were we? Where were we? Sir Brandon Stark. So that I think he is the only Stark left alive male. Yeah, the rest have been married off and had other children. Obviously, we've still got the Grey Stark line here, Lord Brandon. Um, that's, a, that's Wendell Stark of children, who we already know has married off his children differently. Yeah, I 
the Starks are dead. We've got a Snow, a bastard here, who I suppose could be legitimised. Let's just make that smaller a moment. So we have Sir Brandon Stark here, who is widowed. Can we invite him to court? Yes. I want to get him in our court. He was the husband to the late Queen as well, so I'm very surprised that he didn't. Ah, his sibling is this random guy. Okay. Um, and let's have a look at that snow that we found as well clay snow invite to court no well if i send you a little gift clay snow invite to court no i'm gonna say we could have legitimized you as you are actually a stark siblings a cassell and a cassell okay so there is a stark and a stark bastard left alive we could probably make use of that in the future if the west continues to take over everything in the south who knows we may need to expand in the north just to unite ourselves and make them a bit better stronger and sir brandon stark has arrived at our court and he's actually a very very good commander it's a shame that he's widowed if we could change that that would be great even if we get especially if we could give him a seven star bride um award and honor it no i don't want to make you court jester um we will make you important you're very very important I'm not going to be able to arrange a marriage with anyone are we because if you are currently widowed but we will keep an eye on you sir brandon he's a knight as well which is very interesting he's faith of the seven how did i not notice that this is incredibly interesting in fact okay yeah we're definitely going to keep an eye on you we could do something very interesting with you maybe that's why could that be why you've not inherited um right we've got a hell of a lot of gold that is now build bank fortifications how much does that cost oh it costs us in our prestige instead perfect uh, you have ordered the start of the project to improve the bank of the crown's fortifications over the next year you will oversee the improved defense of both bank and seven sport itself working at bank perfect right let's host a tawny of seven sport we'll go for a grand tawny it's gonna cost us a lot of gold but we need to get people on side and we can't hold a similar fair of course because it is winter and i think you have a feast with a tawny anyway don't you normally so um i don't think we can do that anyway so that's fine um there's not a lot else we can do which is good okay perfect let's wait for the tawny uh may you live in harmony and contentment i have been appointed as your regent is that because we're working on the bank at the moment probably the best part about preparing for a feast is deciding what food stuff um spend enough to satisfy everyone's hunger we're not going to go over the top that's not anger at all might upset a few people but hopefully we'll get more people on side than anything else i am looking forward to seeing the tilts and i think what we're going to do it was a great idea i think it was amir who came up with the idea is that we have that valyrian steel dagger that is damon's uh, that he's given away and um, i think we're going to give that to the winner of the tawny don't matter if it's a complete randomer or someone of a high house they will be getting a valyrian steel dagger as a gift lord anger the planters use a favor on lady sybil the young to force them to join all their factions that's probably good because i think he's a liege loyalist no nope. benfrey for rivers and hills oh behave anger behave that's just ridiculous we've got a non-aggression battle what this game sometimes seriously this game sometimes does the most random of things and lionel's apparently in that even though he's our best friend and regent that makes no sense this game really does make no sense sometimes we do need to imprison um this guy as well the belmore guy we won't do it just yet let's let the tawny go out of the way first maybe we can win some people around with that we'll try our wife's way uh, it is lord justin viprin of red fork's turn to joust but to the crowd's shock he stumbles out to the tawny field late and clearly drunk from too much dawnish red and with none of his armor on and only slightly more of his clothing he tries to mount his horse but trips and falls comically to the ground unable to even ride um he is an embarrassment removing from the now there's a man who knows how to celebrate no that would make him like us more though Lord of the Red Fort, but he hates us anyway, doesn't he? We'll lose prestige. No, he's an embarrassment. Remove him from the list. So I can't see Enger being too pleased with that. I'd find it funny personally, but I don't think Enger would be too clear, uh, too happy. So Clarence Dirt, who's used his attendance at the Feast of Seven's Port to present a petition for justice before the court, he claims that Lord Simon Dirt sullied his honour by having illicit relations with his wife behind his back. So Clarence Dirt, um, who the Lord did. Ah, so this could upset him. Um, let's have a look. Does he have a lover? Malira Hardsteel, who is married to Sir Clarence Dirt. So yes, it is true. So he will have to pay recompense, or shall we imprison him? That's probably a bit extreme, and it may cause a revolt. So he can pay you. 
recompense. I had invited a monkey trainer to the summer fair and the performance went well until one of the monkeys refused to ride on top of a pig. Uh, the trainer beat the monkey with a stick which led the other monkeys to attack the trainer, biting him and hitting him with his own stick. Serves him right. Or he shouldn't have beaten that poor creature. Monthly piety up and diplomacy up. Or we can make someone like his more. No, I want to go for the diplomacy. We we could do with getting our diplomacy up, to be honest. So Arnold Royce, who's used his attendance at the Feast and Seven Sport to present a petition for justice before the court. He claims that Lord Damien Shycross sullied his honour by having illicit relations with his wife. So Arnold the Evil, our cousin, he married to our sister, Princess Kyrie. Yes, he is. Have they not had any children? Um, Danies Royce and Alec Royce, okay. Um, so you think that Damien Shycross has been sleeping with my sis oh well this looks bad either way because he's gonna end up shipping his sister out, isn't he damien shycross lovers none so i don't know if it's true lord damien must be arrested to me um, he's clearly not guilty of these accusations it would make our sister look very bad as well wouldn't it we can't believe that of our sister and it doesn't look like there's any proof so uh, as the feast begins lady edmund coldwater presented a position for justice she says that crime and banditry in coldwater burn is increasing yet we will of course send lord benfrey to help out with that bennett blaintridge uses his attendance at the feast of seven sport to present a petition for justice he claims that lady brandon marsh made an attempt on his life and demands that she is brought for, to justice for murder Lady Brandmar, um, hmm, the just, stressed, paranoid, just, craven, stubborn, deceitful, humble, I don't know, would she be the type, she's got very impressive intrigue, and who is bringing this forward, Lord Bennett Blaintree, who is scarred, does he have her as a rival, no, so, um, we could lose the just trait, so it looks like she has done something. So let's make her answer for her crimes. We'll get her to pay a ransom, maybe. Uh, the scale of banditry in crime and cold water burn was too much for Lord Benfrey to handle. Despite being granted many men and much gold, he could not capture the most prominent and cunning of the bandits and rogues. In one armed confrontation, Lord Benfrey and his men came off much worse. Lord Benfrey the Bear became, wow, seriously injured and stressed. Okay, that's not good. He is 50 now, he's looking old. Um, wow, look at all those tawny wins. Four grand tawny wins. One regional tawny. Wow, amazing. At least he tried. And Rosamond, uh, random and or Northman, has arrived at our court. Lord Ellard Redwolf has used a petition of justice. Uh, used his attendance in the Feast of Seven Sports to present a petition of justice to the court. He claims that while he, did, he was detained by Lady Amira Mud, he was barbarically tortured and mutilated. Well, he wasn't, was you? Because you've not you've not been mutilated at all. In the slightest. Um, your opinion of his is bad anyway. So she's not guilty. You've not been mutilated in the slightest. Um, yes, we'll be merciful and we will give her a, um, a um, private chamber. Lord Kristen Creed has used a descent to the Feast of Seven's Port to present a petition for justice. He claims that Belida Silvereye made an attempt on his life. But he's not been wounded or anything. Let's have a look at Lady Silvereye. Um, she'll be arrested and made to answer for her crimes, and she has fled. Okay. But let's have a look at the one that we did get into our brand of chair, where wasn't it? Um, we'll call it a trial, actually. Tawny of Sevensport, find jazz, all of them. I watch every tilt. Yeah, let's watch every tilt and see who beats who. Let's make this interesting. The tawny being held in Sevensport is bringing many visitors to the area. The surrounding roads, inns and villages are reportedly very busy and Sevensport itself is full of merchants and small folk selling their wares. The prosperity of our capital increase is good. We desperately need that. Bessa has arrived at our court. No idea who she is. Andal Northman. Apparently from the Rooklands. Lord Owen Steelheart and Eldon Durandum are the next to Joust. Uh, Lord Owen was declared the winner. Well done Lord Owen. I do like Lord Owen. Sir Eldred of Stone Keep and wow. He's good. Our oh, vassal. Make him important. Let's get a nice name for this guy as well, guys. Um he has got land. He has got sons. He's an incredible fighter and commander. How have I missed this guy? Um okay guys, yes, let's he's a veilman. Let's get He's under the Eerie. Yeah, let's get a nice name for this guy. 
something to do with the veil in the area. That's where he's from. He's very impressive. And he won. Who did he go against? Sir uh, Gwen Snow. Oh, of House Lancer. Yes, of course. Well done, a fine joust. Uh, the next was Sir uh, Roman of Muddy Hall, who's a decent fighter. And he won against Lord Garian at Brightmire. We have Sir Brandon Stark, who was declared the winner. No way. Sir Brandon Stark and Lord Benfrey Lance were the next to joust in the list. After many tilts and broke lances, Lord Benfrey was eventually unhorsed, leaving Sir Brandon to be declared the winner. Now, that is an impressive win. Next are Sir John Hornbreaker and Sir Conrad Grafton. And John Hornbreaker has won, but he has become wounded from that. So, how far he'll go after that, I do not know. Uh, Sir Jordan and Sir Norbert Seymour were the next to joust in the list. After many tilts and broke lances, Sir Norbert was eventually unhorsed, leaving Sir Jordan to be declared the winner. Just a random knight. Sir Alec Wainwood and Sir Adron Bloom were the next to jousts. And Sir Alec Wainwood won. Next are Jorah Blackwood. Ooh, he's pretty decent. And Sir Alan Hunter, who's a decent fighter, but nothing else decent. Man, this guy's pretty good, though. Sir Jorah Blackwood. Let's keep an eye on him. Can we invite him to court? No. Is he the heir? Is he just her brother? What if we send him a small gift? Can we invite him to court now? Will he be interested in coming to court? No. Never mind. Fine joust. Next is Sir Marwen of River Inn. Oh, have House Crownless, and he beat Sir Barth Rosby. Next, we have Sir Ben Brightstone against Sir Harris Seymour, and Sir Ben Brightstone is declared the winner. Now, looks like we're on to the next round. Sir Ossifer Belmore and Sir Belladosh Shycross for the next to joust. Sir Oliver Belmore progresses against Sir Belladosh Shycross. Okay. So it's interesting seeing these random characters that you wouldn't see otherwise, and some of them are very impressive. Sir Alwyn Hunter is very impressive by the looks of it, and he has built Sir Maladon, a Vale man who's okay, nothing overly amazing. Rosling has arrived at our court. Who the hell is Rosling? No idea, but she's a brilliant steward. Okay, so lots of young women suddenly appearing at our court. Uh, Lord Alphamar, Crescent, and Sir Robert were the next to joust. Sir Robert, I don't know who you are, but... Sir Alpha More Crescent wins. He's actually very, very impressive. Loving the big tash. And Sir Alan Longthorpe, who is a formidable fire. Remember this guy. He's insane. He is unhorsed Sir Ben Lancer, who is now out. And now one-eyed. I'm guessing he's just lost that in that duel. Ouch. Not duel, sorry, that joust. Lord Owen Steelheart and Sir Brandon Stark were the next to joust in the list. After many tilts and broken lances, Sir Brandon was eventually unhorsed, leaving Lord Owen to be declared the winner. Lord Owen um, Steelheart. Lord Ossifer Belmore as on horse Sir Bran Ben Brightmore, Brightmire. Sir Barth Rosby and Sir Marwyn Crownless were the next to Joust and Sir Barth Rosby has won. He's pretty impressive as well. Some very impressive people throughout the realm. Sir Eldred of Stonekeep and Sir Jordan were the next to Joust. Sir Eldred of Stonekeep won. This is the guy I want to get a name to. This guy's in pretty impressive to be honest. Very impressive. Sir John Hornbreaker and Sir Roman of Muddy Hall were the next to joust. Sir John Hornbreaker has won. Sir Mance, whoever he... Wow, formidable fighter, former slave. Okay, there's an interesting story for this guy to be told, surely. Um, let's send him a gift. Can we invite you to court? Please, please, please. Yes. Here we go, guys. Here's another guy that we need a, knight, a name for. This knight, this liberated knight who was a former slave and also a very decent commander. Formidable fighter. He could make a good king's guard, Sir Mance. Uh, Jorah Blackwood and Sir Alec Wainwood were next, and Jorah Blackwood won. Next, we have Lord Owen Steelheart and Lord Alphamore Crescent. Lord Steelheart won. Uh, Sir Allard of Stonekeep against Sir Alwyn Hunter, and he has won. Alan Longthorpe against Ossifer Belmore, and Alan Longthorpe has progressed. Sir Barth Rosby and Sir Mance were the next to joust, and Sir Barth Rosby has won. It'll be interesting to see who's won this one. There's some real... Outsiders. John Hornbreaker is still in there, though. So, John Hornbreaker and Jorah Blackwood are the next to joust. Um, and Jorah was unhorsed. So, it looks like it could be a Steelheart and John Hornbreaker final. Lord Owen Steelheart and Lord Alan Longfort were the next to joust. After many tilts and break lances, Lord Alan was eventually unhorsed, leaving Lord Owen to be declared the winner. We could have Liege versus Vassal in the final by the looks of it. Uh, through a covert conspiracy, my father, Sir Ambrose Seven Star, has acquired a claim on the Lordship of Seven Sport. Oh, behave, father. Yeah, I thought you would have had that anyway. Uh, this is a thin claim indeed. Peace with you. I accept your gracious invitation and join your court forthwith. Let's arrange you a marriage real quickly. Uh, arrange marriage between you and we've got several young brides who have arrived lately. 
None of them that we can go for. Let's go for Ronda Harlow, which isn't going to be allowed. Uh, Lord Owen Steelheart and Sir John Hornbreaker were the next to jounce in the list. After many tilts and broken lances, Sir John was eventually on the horse, leaving Lord Owen to be declared the winner. Well done, Lord Owen Steelheart. Well played. Well played. So, with the joust over and the tourney won by Lord Owen of the Mother's Embrace, as promised. I think that's him. One has is Was that the final? Let's just make sure that was the final. Um, after many tilts over several days, only two knights remained undefeated. Sir Bar Frosby and Lord Owen Steelheart faced each other in the final joust. And after many tilts of finally executed jousting, Lord Owen was on horse, leaving Sir Bar Frosby to be declared the winner. He's not even the lord. Who's the lord? His mother of the pebble. Well, that is interesting. That's really interesting. Can we send him a gift and invite him to court? I don't know if we will, because he's probably the heir. Is he the heir? I'm guessing he is the heir to the Lordship of the Pebble. Yes, he is. And we will um, give him an artifact. You've earned this, my friend. Where is it? If we can find it, if we can find it. I did say that we would give it to you. Maybe it's actually... Do we have to actually give you a... Um, give artifact? Um, give Valyrian Steel? Uh, the Tawny of Sevensport, a vic as victor of the Tawny, Sir Barth Rosby has the honour of choosing the Queen of Love and Beauty. So he decided to crown his own wife, Leona Seymour. My god, there's Seymours everywhere and she's pregnant. Um, so let's go to the Pebble. I believe this is the Pebble. Meredith has arrived at your court and then she died. Okay, interesting. Um, yeah, let's go back to the Pebble. A worthy winner, Sir Barth Rosby. Can we please give you your valerian steel dagger that you've earned i really want to give you that dagger but for some reason it's not showing up in there and it's not allowing us to grant you valerian steel i'll sort it out off screen the rosbys deserve their valerian steel dagger as promised for the victor uh my sir john hornbreaker has expressed a desire to get married and has asked my permission to find him a suitable bride i'll find him somebody nice let's have a look who do we have in our court Arrange a marriage between him. He could probably go for, get someone of a higher birth now. He's 44. We've got a Harlow. Um, we've got a Botley. We haven't really got a lot. We've got an Upcliff, our cousin. We'll go with Nan um, Rhonda Harlow then. There we go. Still waiting. No, no, no. We had our son, didn't we? Why did I think that we hadn't had our son yet? Prince Lister, of course. How is Florian doing now? Okay, trained fighter. Come on, Nana, get him training better. The tournament is over, and now it's time to bask in the glory. Gain a load of prestige, and everyone who participated gets plus five opinion of us, which has made our army increase a little bit, so people like us a little bit more because of that, but not a whole huge amount more, but it's better than nothing, isn't it? It's better than nothing. Um, Lady Cherwell Brander the Just. We can ransom you for 70 gold, so we will do that. Hi, King Enger the Third. I hereby invite you to participate in the tourney of the White Star. We're a decent fighter and we're in, yeah, um, yeah, chance to prove my worth. Why not? We will go along, try and earn some glory, try and get people to like us a little bit more. I have grown increasingly attached to Mina and though our marriage was merely a practical arrangement, I wonder if I now come to love her. This marriage is of love, gain 20% fertility, but all the other girls, well, I can't see that from Enga can why he, he would be truly loyal to his wife. Perfect. That will hopefully give us a chance of having some more children. Representatives of Benfrey's Snow have requested an audience. No, he shall stay in my custody. You are not having Benfrey. Your grace, I've collected ample tax revenue. Well done, Hilario. 82 gold again. Uh, may your years be short and miserable. I accept your ransom. Perfect. So our gold has now increased massively again from the tourney. Uh, I believe that one of your vassals can be discouraged from associating with conspiratorial factions. It's profit. Let's threaten the vassal. Um, though I had fought my rival, Sir Enger Seymour, to be a more reasonable rival, our cousin's our rival, um, his request to be allowed to duel his rival, Sir John Seymour, is slightly erratic, um, allow the duel, go for it, John Seymour, let's see who won, so John Seymour is the son of Norbert, isn't it, uh, Sir Norbert, Sir John, well he didn't become injured, his rival, Pyron, Pyron Seymour, okay, so he's rivaled with his family member, and Anger Seven Star, who's already one-legged, is he? He was one-legged anyway, so seems risky, and I ask for your forgiveness, perfect, so we've managed to get Lady Mud back in line, so we can now move on to somewhere else, um, I, can't, I don't understand why, why Anger Seymour's doing this, this game is really, really stupid sometimes, um, let's 
Well, we can't send our Master of Laws to our Master of Laws, can we? That's... Would that actually work? Because that's ridiculous if it does. And then we're going to send his own son to scheme there. That That is quite funny if, if that actually works. Um, we can designate traditional air sea, but we're not going to do that. We've not really got anything other than Bear Island. And you wouldn't want to go to Bear Island as your air sea, would you? Let's be honest. Um, we've got that tawny to look forward to in the White Star. Uh, the past month, your Bannerman, Master Dalton Seagrain, has been organised a reaving, a reaving that he has announced will travel far to the north in the Shivering Sea, where they will target uh, Lorath and Ibony's ships. He and his fellow reavers are now ready and have set sail from Bear Island on the quest to follow the old way. Okay, interesting. Well, uh, the Bank of Leash, your grace, a new bank has been established in Leash. Magister Pydos Moago of Leash has used his wealth to found the Bank of Leash and has built a grand new bank building in the city to house vaults of coin interesting news it won't be as good as our bank i'm afraid and the tawny of white star i shall ready my horse we'll get this tawny out of the way before the end of the episode let's see how we go on we've been drawn against sir harstein oxter who i think we should be working at a bank okay as you close in on your opponent you see an um a chance to hit. I won't bother reading all this out because we get it all the time. And it was a fine hit. Did we manage to unhorse him? Yes. And now we have been called up against Lord Mark of Flint's Cliff of House Orson. How's his... He does have a son now, Gwen Orson, who's... Wow! He's pretty impressive. He's a squire to a septon, apparently, though, which is a bit stupid. Um, let's study our horse. You've been declared the winner defeated Sir Hosting Knox. Now, let's see if we can knock the next person off. And he got the better of us, which is a shame. Has that beaten us, or do we get another chance? And everyone was enjoying the fine display of jousting when Lord Ellery Morgoth and Sir Barry and Redguard were paired up in the last tilt. Lord Ellery did not fare well as Sir Barry's lance found a gap in the armour, gruesomely impaling him. With him in the dirt, in a pool of blood, it was clear he would die. How unfortunate. Oh, shit. So Lord Morgoth has passed away. So Lord Will of the Warriors watch now. He does have a brother, at least, though, Maynard Morgoth. Lord Mark Olsen Lance strikes you, so we we are out. Um, Wow, so that's a shame. Poor poor Ellery Morgoth. What's his son like, Lord Will? He's pretty decent. He is betrothed to some complete randomer. And we are out of the tilt. So I think we'll end the episode there with ourselves being knocked into the dirt. Um, But at least things are looking a little bit better. And... So Brandon Stark has unhorsed John Hornbreaker. That's Ben Freelancer and John Hornbreaker in one episode. He's decent. We need to get him in control of the North. We need to... Can we actually do that? Would it be possible for us to declare war on the North for his claim? I wonder if that would be possible. It looks like it would. Yeah, claim the North. We can claim the North for Sir Brandon Stark. So I probably am going to do that. Then we can have a friend in the north. Oh my god, it's my young ward, Ron, always slowly mastering the art of swordmanship. Ronald Highstar, who I hope to instate again in the future. But yes, we will... Uh, oh, well, two people eloped, got married without anyone's consent. All of them seized, except that Morgoth and Brandon Stark. He Why have you married a 40-year-old Morgoth woman? Oh, oh my god, this game. You are the last surviving male Stark and you marry a 40-year-old woman. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. We'll accept their marriage for now, and hopefully she befalls some sort of illness. What a stupid, stupid thing to do. Uh, but, yeah, we'll end the episode here, guys. So thank you all so much for watching. As always, I hope you've enjoyed. Please don't forget to leave a like and comment down below. If not, subscribe if you haven't already. And hopefully I'll see you all very soon for the next episode of The Knights of Vandalia. The thunder of hoofs tore through the cheers and shouts of the crowd, as the two men charged each other in another tilt. Their lances lowered as the knights raised their shields and charged for the other. Closer and closer came the two men as their charge silenced the crowd, the lances of the knights seeming to hold in them the breath of the crowd. Then a loud crack erupted as lance and shield clashed. Both lances broke, but only one man rode past his opponent, as the other fell into the ground, deep into the mud, sand and stone. Owen Steelheart fell, tumbled, and gasped for air, holding a hand outstretched and another resting on his sword. Sir Barth reached the end of his row, as he turned and held his broken lance aloft. Like a storm, it appeared that the crowd's breath was released once more. They cheered and shouted for their champion for the champion of the Rose Heart. 
Sir Rosby rode toward his opponent, jumping off his horse and threw down his broken lance, offering a hand to Sir Owen. The beaten man accepted, and only more approval came from the crowd as the two great knights raised their hands together in celebration. It was clear that this Bath knew how to gain the love of the people and crowd, for the crowd was fickle, but loved the surprising champion and the man who gave them a display. Sir Barth Rosbury continued along the crowd, seating himself upon his destria once more, riding through the crowd and receiving a large lance from Sir Owen to make things even more interesting, and continued to give a proud display to the observers, making them love their champion even more. The man rode through the ranks before stopping ahead of where the king was seated. The man bowed before the king, and Enger stood. All knew what this meant. Silence took over the arena as Enger took several deep breaths before speaking loud and clear. A voice that carried across the entire tawny grounds. Sir Barth Rosby, you have fought the greatest knights of the realm and have proven yourself as the next champion of Andalia. I applaud your victory. The Seven have granted you the victory and rightfully so. Here stands the champion of Andalia. Another eruption of cheers came from the masses. Enger waited until all was quiet again. You shall receive the usual prizes that are fitting for you. However, there was a greater prize in this tourney for you. A dagger of Valyrian steel that is now rightfully yours. Enger took the dagger from a servant, holding it high for all to see, before walking over towards the knight and holding the hilt towards him. Sir Rosby rode forward, taking the dagger, looking at it with admiration before speaking. You have my thanks, your grace. This dagger is a great honour for my house. Thanks to your house, we have been able to stay here and escape the fate of others. So I dub this dagger Wayfarer, to remember why we serve you and your house. The crowd gave their approval as Enger seated himself again. The usual was tradition. The commoners were happy, the knights and lords enjoyed themselves. This was a fitting distraction to make everyone happy from how truly weak Andalia was at this time. Something that he had to thank his wife and queen for who was sitting next to him. For this was her idea, and not his, for matters of the realm were similar to Tawny's. Luck and skill were involved. However, in the end, only the strongest won. Yes, it always went to the strongest.